In this video, we're going to talk about distributions and why they matter within statistics, especially for scientists. So the distribution is the frequency of values within a data set. So we typically show these through things like histograms. So this is a histogram of an example normally distributed data. You can see it follows what we call the bell curve where it is highest in the middle and then tapers off symmetrically from side to side. And essentially this is just showing us the frequency of values for each individual value. Now there are several common distribution types and it's good to be able to recognize the different distribution types. So when we look at the two different types of data, if we look at continuous data, we have a few different distribution types. The most common one that we're gonna talk about is normally distributed data. So this is similar to what you saw in the previous graph. This means that it is symmetrically distributed on each side and that your mean is gonna be equal to your median, which is gonna be equal to your mode. There are other distribution types. One example is uniform distribution. This means that the frequency of the different values are very similar. So what you essentially get is what looks like a square wave. You can also have a skewed distribution type. This means that they are not symmetrically distributed. Instead, one side is going to look different than the other side. And then we can also get bimodal distribution. And this is typically a combination of two normal distributions. And so what you get is basically two peaks within your distribution. Now we also have discrete data. And so discrete data means like categorical data or counted data where you can't have any possible value on the range, but you have discrete values like one, two, and three. So a couple different distributions that are used specifically within probabilities is first the Bernoulli distribution. And this is a single trial with two possible outcomes. And essentially you see the frequency between both of those possible outcomes. And then you have the binomial distribution. So this is a sequence of Bernoulli events. So when you, let's say the trial is flipping a coin, you can have heads or tails. When you do that multiple times, then you get a, you can get a binomial distribution, which is a sequence of those events. So I'm gonna walk through what a few of these distributions look like. And this is an example of a uniform distribution. You can see that across the different values, there are some randomness to this data, but overall they're around similar frequencies, probably around 30 frequency for each given value. A normal distribution instead looks fairly symmetrical. And so you have kind of the peak in the center of your range. And then as you go outside, that peak is going to fall off and it's going to fall off symmetrically in both the higher and the lower end of values. You can also have a skewed distribution. So in this case, you can see really high frequency for our lower values, and those frequencies drop off as you get to higher values. You can also have this where it is more normally distributed, so there is a like left side to the highest peak, but that one is a longer or has more higher frequencies as you go out from it than the other one. So it's just a quick drop off on one side versus a longer drop off on the other side. And then a bimodal distribution, you can see that this essentially looks like two normal distributions just added together in the same graph. And this is essentially what a bimodal distribution looks like. You essentially get two separate peaks here for each of the modes, and then you get a normal distribution on both sides of those. Now, there are a few different ways that we describe distributions and use them within visualizations. So the first one is their skewedness. So we talked about a skewed distribution, but even a normal distribution can have skewedness. And so a positive skew means that the mean is higher than the median. So essentially there are more values with higher frequency on the upper end of values than there are on the lower end of values. A negative skew is the opposite of this. It means your mean is lower than your median. And no skew means that your mean is equal to your median, which is equal to your mode. And this is typically defined as a normal distribution. One of the best ways to be able to look at distribution is through visualizations. And the two most common visualizations used are histograms and box plots to be able to see the range and the frequency of values that exist. There are also statistical tests to determine if you are comparing to a a certain type of distribution and um, if you can use certain statistical tests that need that type of distribution. 
So the Shapiro-Wilk test determines if the sample comes from a normally distributed population, and this is typically used for smaller sample sizes. The Komogoro smirnov test is a test that tests if a sample distribution matches a reference distribution. So it's not specific to the normal distribution, but it can be used for a normal distribution, and this is typically used for larger data sets as well. So let's talk about why knowing what distribution your data is, is very important. The first is understanding the behavior of the data. So whenever you're looking at a data set, you want to understand what's going on. If you have a bimodal distribution, that's important to understand because there might be two different characteristics affecting that distribution. If you had skewed distribution, it might be worth investigating what, what could be causing the skewed distribution. Is that normal for your data or is there something affecting your data like outliers? It is also incredibly important for choosing the right statistical test. The statistical test that we use, especially if you're using something like a t-test, it make certain assumptions about your data. And for, so for example, your t-test assumes your data is normally distributed. If your data is not normally distributed, you can't use the t-test and it actually mean anything because the underlying assumptions are not correct. So you generally need to check the distribution of your data in order to be able to perform the statistical test that you want to perform. If you want to get more on this and specifically learn how to use R to create histograms, box plots, and run the different statistical tests to test your distribution, and even get downloadable slides and code, check out the Research Mastery Academy. I will have a link in the description below. It includes all of these videos and the, the slides that are downloadable and codes that are downloadable, but it also includes different courses if you join the Accelerate plan or more videos that are available and exclusive workshops that are available only to Research Mastery Academy members. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.